Okay, so this is a video about how to do the fast Fourier transform in Excel. So um, first we need a function to take the transform of. So let me set that up. Time, and we'll call it a g of time. And we'll start from zero and uh, go up by 0.1. And we need a power of two number of samples. So uh, I'm going to go up to 3.1 because that's 32 samples. I put an index here. OK. Uh, counting up. I should count up to 31, starting at 0. So now I will make the function. I'm just going to do a cosine um, a 1 hertz, so 2 times pi uh, times t, two, 2 pi radians per second is 1 hertz, 1 cycle per second, um, oops, times t there. And then I will propagate that equation. So this is our, our input function. We've got time and, and the function of time. So I can graph that with the scatter plot, and we get this. So this, it's a sine wave, a one hertz sine wave. OK, so to do the FFT, we have to install it first. If it's not installed, um, you go to Options and Add-ins. And it seems like you could install it from here, but that's not true. Um, this is what we want, the analysis tool pack. So you can click on that all you want. It won't do anything. You have to go down here to the manage and click go. And then we can opt in for the analysis tool pack. Once we've got that installed, then under the data menu, we see it over here. So it's a little bit different from a regular function. Um, we click on this, and it brings up a wizard. Uh, so we want to do the Fourier analysis. That's the FFT. And so we have to give it the input range. So we're just going to give it our function of time, sampled function of time. And we can give it a range for the output to get pasted into. So I will put it right here. Same number of rows as the input. And we click OK. And ta-da, we've done the FFT. So that's going to be G, capital G, for the transform. And it's a function of frequency, F for omega, there. So to use this for frequency content, we need to graph this versus frequency. We want to graph the magnitude of this. See, these are complex numbers. They have real parts and imaginary parts. So we have to make that into a real number. So in Excel, the, um, the magnitude of G uses this function called IMABS. And we give it that one. In MATLAB, it's just ABS, uh, and it's the, the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, so the vector length in polar coordinates. So this is the magnitude of G. And we can see it's large for some frequencies and smaller, so we need to get the frequency scale. And this is the, the part that the FFT functions never help you with, so you have to remember how to do it. So um, delta f, change in, change in frequency, is equal to 1 divided by the number of points times, so the number of points n is our, the number of points we have here, um, times delta t, the change in time. So my delta t was 0.1 in this case, because I sampled every tenth of a second. So you could also do fs, the sample rate, 
divided by n. It's the same. Fs is 1 over delta t. So that, that works out. So this is our delta f um, that we, we need to use. So um, the, f the frequency here in hertz um, starts with 0. Um, and it's but it's always k times delta f so k times 1 over 32 times 0.1 you could use this rename it or something too clever um, but this will work so this this is the trickiest part is finding this frequency column for yourself. The other thing that the FFT doesn't help you with is knowing what data is good and bad because the FFT gives you useless data. We're sampling this at a tenth of a, uh, at 10 hertz. A tenth of a second is a 10 hertz sample rate. And so the sampling theorem says any frequency in our signal that's higher frequency than 5 hertz fs divided by 2 is aliased. So as soon as these get to be 5 and above, this is frequency, all of this data is aliased. And uh, you'll notice that it's also repeated. So there's the repetition coming in from the uh, alias data. Point um, 184, this one and the same as this one, and this one is the same as this one. So we don't need to use that data, we throw it out. So I can make a graph of the frequency content, the unaliased data, magnitude versus frequency, and make that graph. And it should look like that. So this is magnitude on the y-axis and frequency on the x-axis. Our original signal was a 1 hertz sine wave, 2 pi radians per second. So we would expect a peak at 1 hertz and zeros everywhere else. But because of the way we discretized it, we have to spread out that 1 hertz peak. So mostly goes into the two closest, so 0.9375 hertz gets the biggest amplitude, and 1.25 gets the next biggest, these two. Um, but it gets spread out. Into, um, into all of these as well. So that's the um, FFT in Excel. So I wanted to get into a little of the details of these calculations of uh, delta T and delta F for the fast Fourier transform. So the assumption normally is we have a periodic signal because Fourier series are periodic in general. So this sampling, so this is a plot or just some indication of time, 0, 1, 2, 3, and where we take samples. So we're taking three samples here at 1 second, 2 seconds, and 3 seconds. So clearly n is 3, we took three samples. Delta t, the time between the samples, is 1 second. So fs, the sample rate, is always 1 over delta t, so one sample per second or 1 hertz, that's no problem. And then t, this is where it gets a little tricky. t is the period of our signal. Um, and so normally n times delta t is the period. Sometimes we think of t as the last time point, though. And then it's a little bit murkier what to use. So t here is the period, assuming this is a periodic signal, which means it would repeat. So we would have the last point in the previous series would be at 0 and then it would repeat, and then at 4 it would pick up again. So the total period from when it starts to when it repeats itself is 3 seconds, because this one is going to be the same as that one. So t of 3 seconds makes sense here. Then if we calculate delta f for the FFT, we can use 1 over capital T, which is what our textbook says, 1 over n delta t, fs divided by n because of these equations that you'll get the same fs for all of these. Here's where it gets problematic. If we oops, uh, if we use 
our samples starting at zero. We still have n equals three because we take three samples at zero, one, and two. Delta t, still one second between samples, so still one sample per second. But if we use t, capital T, as the final time, then it's n minus one times delta t because we we're done at two seconds. But that's really the wrong way to think about it. So, so if you use this the final time t, um, then you can't use delta f as one over capital T here. You really should think about it this way as it being the period of a repeating signal. So from when the signal matches itself at zero and three, it's the same number. So that's the period capital T. A lot of the times we use the last sample time as capital T. And if your n is big, it's you know over a hundred, then you have small small changes here between n and n minus one. Um, so usually it's fine, but but this does come up in the FFT analysis. It's always safest to use one over n delta t or fs divided by n because there's no ambiguity with what we mean by the period or the last time point in um, in capital T. So hopefully that clears some things up um, and answers any questions you have.